back to WCB Jazz Vinyl. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming release by Newland Records, which is the Jerry Mulligan Quartet Spring in Stockholm. So this album was recorded by Swedish Radio on May 19th, 1959. It's the first time that it's ever been released in any format, and it's coming out, well, just this Friday, October 18th. Uh, and it's actually available for pre-order now. So let's talk about this album, um, some history, the music, you know, how it sounds. Obviously, did Newland do a great job with this release? Um, before we do, as usual, do subscribe to my channel for more content like this. It costs you nothing. It's just a button. Um, and you can follow me over on Instagram if you'd like as well. I'm at what underscore can underscore brown. Post pretty much every day, whether it's a commentary about an album or other jazz vinyl news that I repost. So yeah, check that out. All right, so again, we have Newland Records' latest release right here. You may remember this label from uh, prior reissues, right, of Jerry Mulligan's Nightlights. There was Kenny Dorham's Jazz Contrasts, thinking the Dorothy Ashby box set, uh, which was titled With Strings Attached. There was the Charles Mingus box set, which is uh, Mingus Takes Manhattan. John Wright's Nice and Tasty. I wanna, I wanna say I've covered most of their releases here on my channel, and a big reason why is because they consistently do a great job with their releases. Um, they involve the right folks in terms of mastering and manufacturing, um, and, and simply they choose solid titles to put out. So what is the uh, meaning of this Mulligan release? Um, so this is, this is not a reissue of previously released content, but instead this is brand new. So, I want to um, I want to put this album a little bit in perspective. So Jerry Mulligan had just recorded prior to this release, excuse me, prior to uh, when this music was recorded, Mulligan had just recorded and released What Is There To Say. Um, that was for Columbia Records, recorded in like late, uh, late 1958, early 1959, and then released, I believe, um, that winter, which as an aside, is just, an, uh, is just a, a phenomenal album that, you know, that too has amazing sound engineering. Um, I would say it's not as appreciated probably as much as, it's, as it uh, should be. And it's still quite cheap to get. Like even for a very clean copy, I don't think you have to spend more than 10 or $15. So um, I, would, uh, I would certainly add that to your, um, to your want list. Um, so the Jerry Mulligan Quartet here is the very same lineup that is featured on that album. So that includes Jerry Mulligan on baritone as well as piano. You also have Art Farmer on trumpet, Bill Crow on bass, and then Dave Bailey on drums. Uh, incidentally, that's also the majority of the group that appears on Jerry Mulligan's Nightlights, which was also reissued by Newland. Um, so for this concert, what they did is they pulled a few tracks to the set list from that album, What Is There To Say, including Utter Chaos, Just In Time, As Catch Can, and the track Blueport. Um, this particular quartet, in terms of how they came together, why they were in Europe for this concert, well, they were touring with Norman Grants uh, in the spring of 1959 alongside the Gene Krupa Quartet, as well as the uh, the Jimmy Jeffrey Three, or the, the trio. Um, and, and so obviously this album was recorded while on that tour with those other bands. Um, as far as how this album came about, well, apparently the Swedish National Radio Archives and the Jerry Mulligan Estate were able to locate the original master tapes for this uh, for this recording, and those were provided to Kevin Gray uh, for mastering and cutting. Kevin Gray has been doing, I think, the bulk of, if not all of, the releases by Newland, um, and and I think is a uh, contributing factor to uh, to, to uh, the sort of the quality that we get from these Newland releases. Uh, the album was printed and pressed at Palace on 180 gram vinyl. Um, on the back, actually, it's kind of interesting. I'll show you the uh, the back here. There's a recollection from the bassist Bill Crow, um, which is uh, which is listed here. Bill Crow is actually still with us at the age of 96, which I think is amazing. So he was able to kind of offer his thoughts on, you know, um, being on tour and playing with Jerry Mulligan at this uh, at this time period. So, um, incidentally, the album's retail price is $44.99. You can order it directly from Newland. It's also available in the U.S. on Amazon for a discounted price of $37.49 at last check. It's also being released on CD for $16.99. So, in terms of a, uh, in terms of a price point, you know, I think it's uh, very much uh, in the realm of you know, of, of other quality releases, right? Whether it's by, um, you know, the original, it's in the original Jazz Classic series or it's uh, sort of, uh, you know, Tone Poet. It's kind of in that uh, in that same category, I would say, as some of these other releases that um, are sort of quote, quote unquote audiophile reissues. 
All right, so moving on to the music, the first thing that you notice at the top of the album is the introduction, and that is actually being done by Gene Krupa, uh, who introduces the Jerry Mulligan Quartet. Um, and funnily enough, he sounds great on his own. Like even just him doing a, even just him doing the uh, the introduction, I think it sort of for, uh, forecasts the uh, the quality that we kind of get from uh, from the quartet. So um, as far as content, there's six pieces here, including three that are written by Mulligan, so originals. There's one by Art Farmer uh, as well, and then there's two standards. Um, and obviously that um, collection of music includes the aforementioned tracks that I said appeared on What Is There to Say. Um, if I was to say what the highlight is for me on this album, it's probably the track Just In Time. Um, I feel like this is a, um, you know, to, to the extent that there's, uh, there's going to be the ability to preview any of this, which I'm not quite sure, I would, uh, I would at least, um, you know, if you can, I would check out Just In Time. I just feel like this song highlights just how much of the character that there is to Farmer's, uh, Art Farmer's sound with his trumpet as well as Mulligan's, um, you know, baritone. And I just feel like the, the solos on this piece are executed really, really well, and that the entire group is uh, is really well balanced, particularly on this uh, on this track. Um, if if I was to say another, it would certainly be Blueport. So this is another really stellar track that features Farmer with just just a super clear tone and. Um, he and Mulligan sort of trade pieces of the melody back and forth that uh, then lead into the solos. Um, but there's there's like many great moments towards the middle of the piece, I think, is, is another highlight where uh, Mulligan plays some like really low level accompaniment on his baritone to Farmer solo. And it's just like a really nice exchange that simultaneously sounds effortless. But because of how much back and forth there is, I can tell you it's uh, it's quite difficult to execute um, as well as uh, as well as they do it here. And, and clearly this is a, a very well practiced group that is very comfortable with each other. Um, you, you get a great sense, I think, of the sonic detail on this particular track as well, um, especially with Bill Crow solo and and uh, Dave Bailey's kind of accompaniment behind, uh, behind the solo. Um, so Blueport is the longest piece on the album, I think by a wide margin, and um, fortunately enough, it's, um, it's just really fantastic. So maybe conversely, um, the track Spring is Sprung with Mulligan on piano. So Mulligan does play piano on a couple of the tracks uh, here. I feel like Spring is Sprung is maybe a little bit less focused in terms of how the solos come across. And I also think that Mulligan wasn't really the best like comping pianist. So do you know what I mean by by comping, right? Where there's a there's a soloist who's there's a soloist who's playing and typically they'll start out kind of on their own and then maybe slowly like Mulligan will introduce a little bit more um you know denser uh comping on the piano or accompaniment on the piano to sort of support the soloist as he then you know typically will conclude that solo. It's usually some pianists obviously will comp throughout, but uh, in other cases it's just towards the end. And um, I just feel like I just feel like Mulligan was not the best comping pianist, um, and he also doesn't necessarily play the right volume. I think that he should, considering that he is accompanying a soloist. Um, but he does play the, the melodies very well, and he is he is a good he is a good uh, piano player. But I am happy. I, I suppose I'm, I think I'm, I think I'm happier more on the tracks where he is just sticking to baritone um, versus those that he is uh, that he's playing the piano. But it's it's not like it's a um, you know, it doesn't detract from the album. I'm just stating like a personal preference. I like it when um, I like it when he's on baritone because there's there's like more space. There's it feels like there's more space around the instruments, and I just feel like it's um it's it's a I don't know this like live recording is more conducive to having that space around the instruments versus Mulligan just kind of like you know playing playing piano. Um, so 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 yeah maybe maybe that's what I would say just a, as a um, as an aside on on spring and sprung but but generally speaking I think this is a fantastic uh, collection of music and I think the the musicians sound fantastic throughout so you know again this is a live performance and so I did want to address the audience participation so um, fortunately the audience noise I say fortunately that's maybe a subjective um, way to put it but I don't like to hear a lot of audio noise especially while the band is playing. I don't mind if there's applause after the fact. So fortunately, the audience noise is quite low. Um, so there is applause after the solos, certainly um, louder applause after the pieces are over, but there is a little bit of, you know, again, of that of that applause after a particularly well done solo. And fortunately, there's, um, you know, there's there's many well done solos here. Um, it isn't distracting. It's it's very clear that it's a, a attentive, respectful audience. So you know, no one is um, is shouting or talking or anything like that that you uh, that you hear otherwise. Um, 
And I will say, based on the sound of the applause, that it sounds like it was recorded in a very large concert hall. And I actually looked up the venue and confirmed that it is indeed a large concert hall. Um, I will say one other note about the audience is that they sort of like oddly laugh after the announcing of a few of the tracks, which I don't quite get because the name, like the, the, the names of the tracks aren't humorous as far as I can tell. So I couldn't tell maybe, you know, is there like a language barrier and the audience didn't really know how to respond after the introductions of some of the songs. So though that was a little like kind of curious, obviously has nothing to do with the music and it's completely aside. I just thought it was, uh, I just thought it was interesting. Um, so overall, I do think that there's actually great balance though across the instruments. Um, and, and as I said, I think that, um, well, I already said this, I, you know, I, I just prefer, prefer the, uh, the piano less pieces probably, um, uh, because they're starker, more space around the instruments. Um, and I just think it like adds to the intimacy of a, uh, of a live recording. Um, but that being said, you know, the album overall is, uh, is fantastic. And, and I, you know, I've listened to this now three times, um, you know, completely, you know, from, from a beginning to end. And what just continues to strike me is how, is how well each of the instruments sound and certainly how the um, the band sounds together, considering that this is a live recording. Um, you know, so in, in, I guess in terms of the execution of this particular pressing, um, you know, I was surprised to hear absolutely no audio issues. There's no degre uh, degradation or no dropouts or like weird noises or even like poorly placed microphones. Um, so in fact, as, uh, as, as far as like live recordings, it's clear that it was done really, really well. And I just think that, uh, that Newland does a great job presenting it here as well, too. All right. So those are my thoughts on, uh, the Jerry Mulligan release, uh, Spring in Stockholm. Um, you know, as I think, uh, I think I've expressed, I'm, I'm a big fan of this music. I think it sounds great. I think this is another great, um, you know, release by by Newland, who continues to do just a, just a great job with each of their releases. If you want to check out their other releases, obviously you can go to Newland's website. And I want to say that their Discogs listing is pretty accurate as well in terms of keeping track of each of their releases. So you can kind of go over there and get a, a get a sense of their discography as well. But but obviously you can just do that heading over to um to Newland and and to the extent that uh, that some of these are still in print because I do know that they sell out of some of their prior, they've sold out of some of their prior titles. Um, so, um, you know, to the extent that they're still available, you can check them all out there. And obviously you can go over to, uh, to Discogs as well and get a, uh, get a sense of what that catalog is looking like. This is still a relatively new label, so they don't have that many releases. In fact, I don't know if, um, I'm trying to think how much this, uh, the catalog number on this would tell us. This is, um, you know, 009, which implies, you know, at least nine releases, but they also have those box sets. So anyway, there's there's plenty of uh, great stuff on the uh, the label to check out, and in each time they've done such a great job. So if you're interested in any of those other titles that I kind of mentioned up front, you know, check my um, do like a search in my you know video history here on YouTube because I tend to do a a, a review of each of their releases because it's uh, it's typically something that I'm looking forward to. So um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Thanks everyone for sticking with me as always, and I'll see you next time.